Hello dear shooters, thank you for choosing the SCAT system and uh, we'll record three videos on how to set up the SCAT MXW2, the SCAT MX02 and the SCAT BASIC. Um, these will somewhat um, intertwine but generally it will be a separate video for each system. Once again, good luck with your training and thank you for choosing SCAT. So as the first step when you receive your SCAT trainer and go ahead and set it up, you'll need to identify the mounting kit. This is the universal mounting kit that comes with the system. Um, it's a V-shaped aluminum block with adjustment screws, a flexible metal strap and a small Allen wrench. Um, just run the metal strap around the air cylinder or the barrel of your gun. Then uh, make sure that the brass screws face the back of your gun like this and hook the metal strap on one side and then run that screw here then tighten it up. Um, I have the dovetail mount. This is where the sensor will go. I have it on the bottom but it doesn't really have to be on the bottom so we can put it at a uh, 3 o'clock position or 9 o'clock position. Uh, whatever works best for us. So um, make sure it's tight, just, just finger tight, doesn't have to be crazy tight. And one thing to remember is uh, for the sensor to read the shot, to feel that vibration and the shot sound from your trigger, the connection here must be metal to metal. Um, there should not be any sort of padding or tape in between the mount and the gun. Another important thing to remember during the setup is that you need to set the right distance to your target on the sensor's dial. This is the focus of your sensor. So it needs to correspond to the real distance in meters. This, this dial is in meters. This must correspond to the distance to your paper target. Uh, there is a screw here which loosens this pointer. For any distance above 50, you set the infinity. Otherwise, we'll set it for five because that's where, how we're shooting here. And then you tighten the screw again and put the sensor on your gun. Once you have the universal mount set up on the gun, you can go ahead and slide your sensor on the dovetail rail there on the bottom and just use the Allen wrench to tighten the screw. That's it, the sensor is set. Um, you can also, like I said before, I'll, I'll, I'll loosen this a little bit, you can rotate the sensor to any degree or any angle on the gun you find most convenient and uh, use it like that. The next step is to install the SCAT software. You will receive a flash drive in the kit, just like this. Um, just use it to find all of the software and manuals and uh, necessary materials. Um, also keep in mind it's not a problem if you lost your flash drive. All of the software is always available on the SCAT website at scat.com slash support. Um, this is your uh, primary source for the latest um, software drivers, manuals, it's all here, it's always available and free for download, um, so keep that in mind. Then you'll need to connect your wireless sensor to your PC. Um, just click the power button and you'll see the blue LED flashing on your uh, sensor. This means that the sensor is in direct connection, direct wireless connection mode and is ready for connection. The blinking says that there is no connection but it's ready for it. What you'll need to do is you'll need to um, connect to the sensor's created Wi-Fi network. Um, so you'll disconnect from the disconnect from the current network and connect to the new SCAT network. You'll, you'll, you'll see one. So once you connect to it, the blue light should turn to solid blue. This indicates that the sensor is now connected. 
Yes, we see there is a connection here. You'll see a connection like this, no internet, but it will it is connected to the SCAD device. At this point, go ahead and click Start Practice. Um, you'll need to add a user. So I already have a few added here, but uh, you'll need to create your own user the first time you run it. Click Continue and you'll need to choose the type of connection you have. We're setting up a wireless connection. You can also, by the way, you can also use the sensor with a cable. So if you don't want to um, mess with the wireless connection or your device is not Wi-Fi capable or you're low on uh, charge on your sensor, you can just use the standard USB connection just like you would on the MX02 system, for example. But in this case, we're setting up a Wi-Fi connection. Once you click Wi-Fi, uh, assuming that your, your sensor is connected to your computer, you should see the serial number of your sensor right here. Highlight that and click Continue. In order to do that, you'll need to go to your About tab right there up top. You go to the About tab, you click Diagnostics. And here you'll need to set the profile for your uh, wireless router. You go to Wi-Fi Profiles and you add a new profile. We already have one added here, but I'll add a new one. It has to be spelled exactly as it is, so it's B-E-L-K-A in our case. So, and you click OK. Once you have the Wi-Fi profile set up, you close it. Then you can go to the Wi-Fi mode in order to switch the sensor into the network mode. Um, You'll see that right now it's in the direct Wi-Fi connection mode um, and you need to enable the Wi-Fi connection of a local router. Click that, click OK, and the sensor will reboot and start the search in the green mode. The green mode indicates um, wireless network mode. So the green is the connection where you should have um, a connection to the sensor as well as the connection to the internet. You see that the, the LED is solid now. The LED below the power button is solid. This means that the sensor connected successfully to the local network. Then now we switch back our computer to that network. Um, so we need the same network we set up for the sensor. Connect. So now we have both the sensor in the Wi-Fi network mode you see it's solid green, it means connected to our local network. And we have the computer connected as well. From the main screen, again, click Start Practice. Uh, choose your created user. Go ahead and click Continue. And under Wi-Fi mode, you should see your um, sensor again. But this time, you will have an internet connection because now you are connected to that local router. At this point, you can go ahead and select the target you want to practice with. Um, so we'll choose, for the purposes of this video, we'll choose the 10 meter air pistol. And also on the bottom here, you have uh, different filters. You can choose just the pistol targets uh, or just the rifle targets, for example, or only the NRA targets or just the SSF targets. The next step is printing and setting up your target. And it's hard uh, to stress enough how important this step is for correct target recognition. Um, a lot of times people who set it up for the first time have issues with the sensor not recognizing the target. Um, in, in the vast majority of cases, this is due to incorrect target setup. Um, what I mean by that is first you need to print out the right sc scale target. Um, and this is a real, real size target, so it's a 10 meter air pistol target printed for the 10 meter distance, so for the real distance. So this would be the size of a, of a target you purchase at a store. However, we have a distance of 5 meters here, as you can see on the um, tape measure here. So we have, well, we're just, just a bit over 5. Um, that's why 
we have a scaled down version of this target. This is how it looks like. So it's a 10 meter air pistol target, but printed for five meters. And if you set up a bigger target at a closer range, the target will appear too big for the sensor. At shorter distances, if you're scaling down the target below five meters, so we have five meters here, we recommend printing out the target without the scoring rings. So it's, it's the same target essentially, it's just missing the scoring rings because sometimes, depending on the light and the print quality, these rings might show up as a haze uh, in the sensor's view. Once you have the target printed, you can go ahead and stick it on the wall or any other surface you choose for your practice. Um, there is not much to it, but one very crucial thing to remember is the light on the target. The target has to be, it, it must be well lit in order for the sensor to see it and to recognize it. Uh, the, it, it must be uh, a black circle on solid white background and the light should be a directed light at the target. We don't need a light that's too strong a regular table lamp or a flexible lamp like this one will be fine, but it has to be a directed light at the target, not an omnidirectional lamp that will shine onto the target as well as into the sensor. As you can see here, this light is not very strong, but it will be enough to, to light up the target and for the sensor to recognize the target. But in a situation uh, like this, where you have an opposing light, a light that opposes the sensor, it will not work because a, a, a source of light stronger than, than your target light is shining into the sensor, basically blinding the sensor. So you need to keep in mind that there shouldn't be sources of light next to the target shining in your direction. Keep in mind that the target area should be the brightest spot in the adjacent surrounding. On this step, you need to take a shot as carefully as possible at the actual paper target you have set up. Um, first, you can use the preview mode just to make sure that your sensor is well aligned with the aim of your gun. In this mode, you'll see a rough preview of your uh, sensor's viewpoint. And what's important in this mode is to aim at the target and make sure that it's generally within the field of view of the sensor. It doesn't have to be centered, so just like I have it now, I'm aiming perfectly at the, at the center of the target, but you see that in the preview it's not in the center. And that's totally fine as long as the target is in there. Once you've made sure that the sensor is well aligned and you've turned off the preview mode, um, you will be able to calibrate. At this stage, go ahead and aim at the target as carefully as possible. You can cheat in any way possible, use a um, rest like I'm doing here, but the most important part is just to take a shot at the very center of that paper target out there. And once the sensor recognizes the target, you will see a red dot on the screen in that black circle. The black circle re is, represents the field of view of the sensor. It's not, it's not the target, it's, it's the large field of view of the sensor. And the red dot does not have to be in the middle of it. It just has to be anywhere within. Um, obviously, you don't want it to be on the very edge of the, like that, but if it's like this or closer to center, you are just fine. You can go ahead and take your calibration shot. Um, one last thing is if you are shooting at shorter distances, sometimes um, the parallax might be an issue and uh, irrelevant of um, how you aim, you'll see that the sensor is aiming on the very edge of that field of view. In this case, you'll need to use these brass screws in order to compensate for that parallax. Basically, when you screw them in, it can change the angle of the sensor and tilt it up just a tad. But this is an issue at very short distances, um, definitely below five meters, and it's not a commonly occurring issue. Um, but this is how you would deal with them, with, with the use of these screws. But back to our calibration, uh, we're fairly well within the black circle, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a shot at that target. 
Okay, we have the calibration shot registered on a field of view. You can click continue and this would be your practice window. At this point you can go ahead and start your practice. So this, the system recorded my shot. Please don't laugh at my shooting. It's horrendous, but it does the job of explaining of how to set up SCAT. There's another shot, and the system is replaying the shot for you.